In August of 2000, Brenda Sexton, a police officer in the 8th Police District of Chicago, was murdered in a domestic violence incident in her home. Your pledge of one dollar or more will help the Brenda Sexton Memorial Gardens provide a sanctuary for Wings Metro residents and stand as a tribute to a fallen police officer who lost her life in an act of domestic violence. Hmm. Brenda was a very vivacious, caring, loving, and loyal. Hilarious, always making people laugh, and strong, very strong. Five kids on her own. Bright, vivid person. She was definitely loud. You definitely knew she was in a room. Generous, uh, caring, and lively. One of my most uh, vivid memories of her was that we were, she was babysitting all of us, um, and she was cooking us pizza one day, cooking us dinner, and she totally forgot about the pizza. She left it in the oven. It was darker than dark. And instead of taking it out and throwing it out, she just told all of us, well, this is a new type of pizza. It's chocolate pizza. She was a single mother of five. She put herself through, was putting herself through nursing school and the CPD position came available to her. She went through her academy, you okay. know, with her children. She just was so strong. Like I just, I, could, I mean, I have two kids and I couldn't imagine five of them. <laughs> and then to have her own house and just her career and, and still juggle all of it and just seems so normal. You know, I just, she was just a very strong person. Every morning that we'd wake up, she'd be in her bed watching TV. Then all of us would uh, actually go inside of her room. Either if she was sleeping, we'd wake her up. Then we all have our spots. One would be behind her, one would be in front of her. Then of course I would be laying at her butt and uh, <laughs> just curled up right there. And that was like an every morning thing that we always did. and. I'll never forget it. I think it, that the Memorial Garden is a wonderful place where people can go and think of their loved ones or think of a future for themselves. It's going to be beautiful, just like Brenda. I think that um, it's going to give opportunity uh, to second life for uh, individuals who have struggled and um, help them get back on their feet and actually uh, live a healthy life. It helps them see the positive in life again and just helping out. Um, you know, it just takes a couple of days, a couple of hours to get them back on their feet. Whatever the case may be, what they can actually see, there's a brighter side of life. I think it's ironic because I think that, you know, maybe she has something to do with it. Like, this is, hey, look, guys, this is a real problem. Look at what happened to me. And I believe you guys found out about her after the location was picked. And to have something like that to connect it to really drives it home and I just think it's, I don't think it's a coincidence. Domestic violence leaves your kids with memories, horrible memories that are hard to get over and it would be hurtful for them just to have those memories because sometimes you don't make it like my mom did. Well people should donate because um, domestic violence is a problem that shouldn't be a problem. It, is one that goes underreported and uh, doesn't get enough attention. People should donate because every nine seconds there's a woman in the U.S. who is either battered or beaten. It's sad, but it happens. It's important for people to donate and to know that this could be their daughter or their somebody that they know. And chances are they do know somebody, and it's important to keep that that those donations coming.